Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. I uh, had a little challenge setting the sound this morning. I had to find out where the sound was on the lavalier mic. I wasn't really sure. So I started and stopped and started and stopped, and uh, it finally resolved itself. But then it's all, yes, that's the button to push. And I reset it from a 15 to a 9, which I hope means you can hear me. I usually don't have a quiet voice, but this is a kind of a new and rather uh, different setup than we're used to, so I'm still kind of figuring out the kinks. I'll probably have them sorted out in the first week of May, so your patience, as always, is appreciated. Uh, one thing I wanted to say about this uh, isolation business we're all under right now, it doesn't have a precedent, not really. Uh, in fact, well, there's an old saying that uh, history doesn't so much repeat itself as it does rhyme. So, if you're kind of looking for, or, you know, has this ever happened before? No, not exactly this way. We've never had a pandemic that involves uh, an uh, extra strong uh, virus uh, that had flu-like symptoms but was a lot worse. Uh, but we have, if you go way back, uh, and you'll notice that the, one of the pioneers in dealing with this terrible disease is on the Google uh, header this morning, uh, polio. 1920s, 1930s, and especially well, 10s, 20s, 30s, into the 1940s and even 50s. Um, few people really understood the, uh, the virus, uh, actually uh, how it worked and how it transmitted. It, it certainly transmitted by touch, uh, by using common articles, and it was airborne. So in a lot of places, particularly in the south, where it was kind of on the warm, muggy side, but throughout the north too, uh, it wasn't uncommon, particularly in the summer or even in the early spring, uh, for word that there had been a polio outbreak to spread. And uh, schools would close, uh, a lot of businesses would close, or certainly restrict their hours. It was all sort of voluntary. It wasn't quite the health infrastructure we have today, and certainly not the same kind of communication. And uh, it was all very mysterious and, and frankly, uh, very frightening to people. So I remember my mother telling me, uh, she was born in 1927, that in the 1930s, uh, there were summers where she couldn't have anybody over to play and she couldn't go to the movie theater, which was a big thing back then when you didn't have television. And more or less you had to stay home by yourself. Um, and she didn't have any brothers or sisters, so it was kind of a lonely business. Uh, so we, we have had some precedent before. And in terms of strange, weird things happening, though you probably don't remember it too well, there's 9-11, that was a very dramatic, and I should say very scary, proposition. And uh, for my parents' generation, there was also the Depression and World War II, which probably made their lives feel uh, topsy-turvy, to use a word they liked back then, uh, all the time. Uh, ours is neither better nor worse, it typically is. Uh, the hard part, I think, for you right now, it's during the middle of the semester, and you're having to take courses, uh, like, and it's like somebody turned the switch from we all get together, talk, chat, talk about materials, and then take exams, do the normal routine, to all what's doing this kind of remote thing. Where it's much harder to ask me a question or for us to have a back and forth. We could probably get around that with a little more work uh, if we have to do this uh, much longer, uh, but for right now, this is the way we're going to meet. Now that said, it's very important uh, that you feel free to email me. Do not worry about it. Please, for gosh sakes, if you think a question is dumb, then it's got to be asked because I'm sure somebody else has the question. Uh, there's no such thing as a dumb question. There really isn't. Uh, I, I strongly believe that. Uh, and uh, besides, it may enlighten a lot of other people too. Also, a comment. And if you're having any troubles, please tell me. I'd like to know. I uh, can't always help, but I can listen. Uh, do that pretty well. And uh, also, um, one thing, I, 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 it's not natural per se. We, we tend to hunker down in this, and I hate that word, hunker down. Um, uh, we, we sort of batten down the hatches, as a good Navy word, when things are bad like this. And uh, we're in our houses, we're in our apartments, we're in our parents' house. Things feel kind of oppressive. Uh, they feel strange. We're not quite sure what happens next. The news is, well, I'm on news blackout for the rest of the day to give you an idea. Um, no Washington Post, no New York Times, nothing. I've read their headlines. Yuck. May I strongly recommend, as much as it may require a little bit of uh, push, uh, to get outside. I mean, that, sounds, that may sound trite, but it's very important. Nothing beats sunshine, 
Nothing means going outside. Take a walk. If you're a runner, run. If you're a walk, if you don't walk, walk. Uh, if you don't want to walk, sit. But just stay outside. At least 20 minutes, 30 minutes would be good. Uh, it's a beautiful day. It's a little chilly, but it's still a beautiful day. Get outside and get some air and some sunshine. It will improve your mood and make you feel quite a bit less isolated. Even if all you do is wave to your neighbor uh, from 60 feet away or 6 feet away. Um, just a thought. And uh, I, tr I promise you, we will get through this just fine. I guess I know that because there's so much history that says we get through things like this all the time, just fine. Doesn't mean it'll be easy, but we will get through it. Um, and uh, I'm going to give you a fair warning, I do got my running shoes. Uh, actually, I bought a new pair. The old one was they're kind of pathetic. Uh, it's been a while since I've run. and decided, well, I've got time on my hands, time to run. Uh, it's not a pretty sight seeing me run, at least not yet. But, you know, one step in front of the other uh, and some ibuprofen. That seems to be very good for pain and joints and muscles. And having reactivated a few after a long wait, uh, I'm going to need some. I actually already took some this morning. So there you go. I'm in it too. What I wanted to talk about today in terms of class is about finances and money. Uh, this is not in your syllabus uh, because we didn't have COVID-19 when I wrote the syllabus. Actually, we did have it, it's just nobody seemed to be taking it seriously. And I want to talk about the impacts on state and local budgets of um, COVID-19 specifically. What's happening and why. Um, it's interesting that the uh, Senate Finance Committee Chairman, uh, Janet Howell, she's from Fairfax County, and, uh, lives in Reston, Virginia. Uh, she was very proud of the budget that was enacted this year. Uh, and I think she really had a right to be. Had a lot of new priorities, uh, set a lot of higher funding levels for teachers, education, infrastructure. And she was very proud of it, like I said. And I guess the best I can say without sounding negative, because it's not meant to be, she tried very hard, as did everybody else, it's now in tatters. Um, revenue, because of COVID-19, is going to be severely impacted. I mean, badly impacted. How bad it's going to be? Well, that, I guess that's still up in the air. If uh, this thing should retreat sometime in the early, uh, in the late spring or early summer, or who knows, maybe even earlier, things could get better. But it's not going to be that easy this year for the states and localities. This affects everybody just about the same. The Virginia budget is, right now, it was, what was enacted was $63.9 billion. That's a lot of money. And it covers everything you can think of. It covers roads. All roads in Virginia are taken care of by the state. It covers uh, police, fire, schools. Uh, Virginia contributes heavily to school systems, K through 12. Um, and where does it, the money's gotta come from somewhere. In Virginia, it comes from uh, one principal source, which is the state income tax. We all have money taken out of our paychecks uh, for the state income tax, just like we have the federal tax. Um, if you don't, and then say, what else? We also uh, have uh, taxes on property transactions. You sell a house, you buy a house, you have to pay the state something to record it, and there's a fee that goes with it. It's a revenue raiser. So when the economy, and particularly the um, uh, Real estate market is coming, they make a lot of money. Then there's sales taxes, gas taxes, uh, and licenses, fishing licenses, which I recommend right now because you can do that in complete uh, social isolation. And uh, there are no doubt a few more I'm missing, but that kind of gets the bulk of where the revenue comes from. And every one of these is going to be impacted by the coronavirus. Now, that, since so many people have lost their income, I suspect a number of you have lost part-time jobs by this point. Uh, a number of my neighbors are staying home without a check. Uh, so what's happening? The, sale, uh, the uh, income tax collections are dropping. If you're not making as much income or you're making no income, the state is getting nothing. And that's going to be pretty evident pretty quick. Uh, Remember I mentioned the transfer of, uh, of, ha of homes? Uh, well, when you buy a house, if you get the state gets a little chunk of money. Well, not anymore. Uh, that's a, going to be a major shortfall. Uh, they were having a wonderful real estate market and making lots of money off that little uh, source of revenue. And that's kind of a little more than you think it is. 
and uh, property transfers just aren't happening right now. It's kind of hard to tell what's happening to the real estate market in the state. Uh, houses are still for sale, but people don't want to go look at them. And uh, also, if you're concerned about your income, the last thing you're going to worry about, you're going to do is go and buy a new house. So it's going to be a, a it's going to, that source is going to dry up. And then hotel and motel taxes. We make a lot of money off of uh, taxes on hotels at resorts. You go to Virginia Beach, you pay what ten percent for the privilege of staying in a hotel to the state. Uh, anywhere on I ninety five, I sixty six, I eighty one, all the big corridors, I sixty four, right out of Richmond. There are all kinds of hotels along the way, motels, and uh, if you stop for the night, and stay, at a, stay at one of these, you're paying a hotel tax or motel tax. Well. A lot of these places are dead empty. Uh, even Donald Trump's uh, resort hotels and this big hotel in Washington, that one in particular recorded a 5% occupancy rate. Uh, he's not making any money and the District of Columbia is not making any money off of their uh, hotel tax. Um, and there's Virginia Beach and Williamsburg, they're all pretty much shut. So this source of revenue, that, uh, that hotel and motel tax, the tourist tax you might call it, is, uh, is gone now. Uh, Gas taxes, uh, these are used for highway revenues, uh, I mean, they are highway revenues, uh, they're used for highway projects, they're used to, to fund improvements, they're used to fund repairs, uh, and there's also a national uh, highway tax which goes to provide uh, money, or gas tax which goes to provide money for uh, federal highways. Uh, two things are driving that down. One, the price of gas is way down. Has very little to do with COVID, uh, and that is uh, the uh, at Saudi Arabia and Russia um, are duking it out, or were duking it out, on who could sell gas the cheapest, because Russia had uh, sought to undercut an agreement uh, to uh, sell gas at a certain price. Uh, Saudi Arabia decided to sort of burn Russia by selling their gas at even cheaper prices. Now forcing both countries into a position where uh, they're producing gas at less than the cost to extract it. Uh, probably Russia is the worse off in this deal. Uh, Saudi Arabian costs of production are lower than the cost of production for Russia. But what it's ha what's happened is that uh, gas at one time, 10 years ago, was nearly $100 a barrel, is now about $20 a barrel. So you're seeing really cheap gas prices. Uh, you see them at the pump, a little less so, it never quite correlates. Um, can't quite give you an answer on that one. Just, I think somebody's keeping a little money. Um, but what happens is the revenue from the gas tag drops sharply. And um, of course, nobody's really driving that far anywhere uh, at the moment. I was out on I-95, I had to go to a doctor's appointment, so it was an essential mission. And uh, I drove all the way from Fredericksburg to Washington, just shy of Washington, D.C. And I never went below the posted speed limit. That, it was at 8.30 in the morning on a weekday. If you've ever driven to Washington, D.C. on a weekday at 8.30, the idea of having the road bumps to yourself is kind of incredible. So people aren't driving, and one of the things aren't happening, Sa uh, sales taxes. That's a big source of revenue for Virginia. Uh, and a lot of localities, too, I should say. They get a lot of money from sales taxes. Well, let's see. Um, TJ Maxx is closed. Uh, Target's open, but uh, Ross is closed. A lot of the big department stores, Belk is closed. Uh, they just aren't selling at the moment and uh, they are not paying any uh, sales taxes. In fact, so many businesses are closed and the sales tax revenue has to be off sharply. Again, the numbers really haven't come out on that. Uh, the state director of finance, uh, he said that the number was going to be about a billion off of revenues. Maybe a worst case, too big. I think he was operating under the short view scenario of a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think at this point it could be substantially more. You just can't freeze the economy and freeze all sorts, all these sources of revenue and, see it and then cut them and uh, dramatically or see them cut and reduced and expect the revenue uh, to keep flowing at just a few percentage points below what it was. I think it's going to be a very dramatic reduction in revenues for the states and uh, the counties and the cities. Um, so I'm not going to pick on him for that. I think it was a good number when he said it. I think it's gotten a lot worse. The only, I, I presume groceries are doing fairly well because, my gosh, my neighbors, as practical, as thoughtful as they are, seem to go down to our local Y store and clean it out about once every day by noon. 
Um, now one county, uh, actually my, my county here in Stafford, uh, they had some early estimates. Again, I think they're a bit shy, but they predicted that their hotel tax revenue would be off 50%. Well, I think it's been more like 75%. And uh, they don't know what to say about property taxes. Here, here's an interesting thing about property taxes. We, we really don't know what's happening there. Uh, according to the big mortgage companies, there's been a dramatic uptick. Didn't give a percentage. Uh, but just a big uptick in people not paying their mortgage. They're just skipping a month or maybe two months. Uh, well, when you have a mortgage, uh, part of what you're paying is a, a money into an escrow fund maintained by the mortgage company or the mortgage holder uh, that pays the property taxes and your insurance. And uh, if you're not paying your mortgage payment, that escrow fund's going to drop real fast and the county uh, will simply not uh, get its money. In some places, in some states, uh, the state also gets money from property taxes, but here in Virginia, it's just the localities that get money from property taxes. Uh, as that gets a bit worse, as that I just have to see how that uh, plays out, that could also impact local government uh, returns from their property tax revenue. We'll just have to see. Uh, another thing, too, is that uh, a lot of people who have paid for their house, uh, are elderly, uh, some inherited houses, uh, most, most people won't seem to have a mortgage, but uh, those that don't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised because they don't have a job, uh, they may find themselves missing property tax payments as well. Um, some fixed income people will probably make their uh, payments uh, as they would normally, since their situation is probably not that dramatically affected just yet unless they were supplementing their income with a part-time job. So I think we could see an increase there. Delinquency in real property taxes. And probably it's also in uh, personal property. And personal property taxes, another source of revenue for the counties. If stuff like your car, your boat, if you have a boat, I don't, I don't have a boat. Uh, and I don't think they tax my tractor. That may be because they don't know about my tractor. I'm gonna keep that one secret. Pretend I didn't say that. Um, now, what's uh, going to happen as a result of all this, I really can't say for sure. I wouldn't uh, make a dire prediction. But a lot of expenditures are continuing. You think about uh, the state having closed the schools, uh, the public schools, K through 12. So a lot of students. And under what I'm going to talk about in another section, uh, the standards of quality formula, uh, it's a formula, that's all, all it is, for allocating funds to education. Virginia pays a substantial part of our education cost in the Commonwealth. It's based on the income of the area. Where I am in Stafford, they pay about half. In Fairfax County, they pay about 75, I mean, excuse me, they pay about 25%. In Buckingham County, they pay about 75%. So it's based on need, income levels. Well, it's a very complicated formula, and I think if to understand it, uh, it's been suggested you take calculus one and two first. Uh, that's a joke, but. It is a little complicated. Uh, it's, it's an index. It's very complicated and it's uh, probably pretty fair too. Uh, I think they try very hard to make it fair. So what does all this mean to counties and cities, states? Pretty easy to understand. Uh, it's just a question of how bad. Uh, they're going to have to cut back funds for things that we hold dear and dear. All those new programs that Janet Howell talked about, that she was so proud of, will probably be on the chopping block almost immediately. Uh, new hires in the state are certainly going to be frozen. Reductions in staff, very possible. I wouldn't uh, doubt that it will happen at the county and the state level uh, pretty soon. Because once the revenue sources start declining, uh, it's going to be a, a pretty quick translation to reductions in what are called reductions in force in the government. Um, and one thing to remember about Virginia, uh, a little different from California, for example, we can't go into the red. In other words, we can't run a deficit on our operating expenditures. We can't issue debt. Uh, we can issue debt for long-term capital projects like highways, and big buildings, and new schools, but we can't issue it just to run day-to-day -day operations. So if we are going to make our budget, uh, we're going to have to make a cut, and lots of cuts. Now, we do have a fairly large reserve fund. That's something uh, in Virginia that we're very fortunate to have, nearly $2 billion. And that could cover a lot of uh, shortfall. I don't think it's going to cover it all, though. And uh, as I said, we're, we're still running the school. We're still paying the teachers. Nobody uh, stopped the teachers' paychecks. Uh, they're still being paid. 
and at least uh, so that's an outgoing, that's a continuing ongoing expense. So a lot of things. Don't forget also fire and rescue, emergency personnel uh, trying very hard to get critical equipment for hospitals and emergency service personnel, having to outbid other states in trying to find uh, the N95 mask at some old warehouse stuck in the back of somewhere in uh, Wisconsin or, or, or trying to buy a 40 year old ventilator uh, from some vendor who didn't even know he had it in his warehouse. Uh, that's the challenge. These are very expensive things to have to do. And of course it means a lot of state employees are at work. Uh, they're being paid too, whether they're at work or being uh, or teleworking. And a lot of them probably will be laid off soon too because simply uh, some people can't telework. But that's just a, a projection. I think Virginia's going to try to be kind to its workers. Um, just a quick look, and we'll do a little more looking into this next week in the next broadcast, uh, which will be about the stimulus bill which is aimed heavily at uh, localities and states. Uh, Virginia, at the very minimum, should get, uh, I think I wrote the number down here, I figure it right out of a, uh, no, I didn't write it down, but it's about $1.26 uh, billion dollars will, at, the, at a minimum, come to Virginia uh, as a direct grant for the federal government. The stimulus package is about $2.2 trillion. That's a probably the largest relief package ever enacted by the federal government, ever. Certainly over such a short period of time. Uh, you, you could adjust for uh, uh, real dollars and maybe you could say that the uh, cost of the New Deal uh, from 1932 to 1940 was actually more, uh, but I'm not sure you could say that. Uh, we were a smaller country, those were more modest objectives. This is a massive bailout. Uh, it's a massive assistance package. Uh, to be frank, uh, I haven't quite decided whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, but right now, maybe it's a good idea. I'll, I'll land on that side of the column. Well, like I said, I didn't want to take forever because long videos are long videos, and I don't know about you, I get distracted no, no matter how passionately interesting you may find this topic. So I'm going to close off there, and I'm going to come back in a couple of days with another video on the stimulus package. That may be just 15 or 20 minutes, and then we're going to have another one on education and local government. And we'll try to keep it interesting. Also, we're going to do one on women in politics. Doesn't directly relate to this court, of course, and yet, I think I'll talk about state and local government, national government. I don't see how women in politics doesn't relate to this course. It's also, I think, a very interesting lecture. So stay tuned and stay, really, stay well. Stay active if you can. And uh, let me know how you're doing. Uh, I, a number of you wrote back to my email, which I appreciated. Feel free to just drop me a line saying things okay, eh, kind of bored, not okay, let me know. I'd appreciate it. So signing off and you have a good rest of the day and uh, study hard and I'll give you some more details too about uh, the writing assignment. I'll be writing that in an email to you. With that, thank you and uh, still morning, so have a good rest of the day. And I'll do something about not making you watch me get up from the chair so uh, slowly. One thing at a time in this business.